Hey, what's up? Welcome back to another edition of the Mandatory Live Fight Preview Show. We've got a great one for you this time because, of course, Canelo Alvarez back in the ring against Brian's fellow Puerto Rican, Edgar Berlanga. So Mexico versus Puerto Rico, one of the best rivalries of all time. We are going to be breaking down the whole entire fight. We're also kind of going to go through the card as well. Eris Landy Lara, Danny Garcia, the co-main, Kayla Platt is fighting, Cool Boy Steph, Stephen Fulton is going to be back as well. This card is great, Brian. But before we get into all of that, if you like the content, hit that like and subscribe button. Also follow us on our social media channels. We're at the mandatory TKO. And you can also find us on the audio side as well. So if you got a couple of minutes, Make sure to leave us a rate re review and give us a five star because all of that helps the channel and the show grow. And if you already have done all of that, we do appreciate you. Yeah. All right. Well, let's get to the co-main because I think that is probably the best fight on the car. The most intriguing one for me. Eris Landy Lara is the favorite. Minus 245. Danny Garcia is a plus 190. Straight up on the money line. Brian, both of these guys. Well, Lara has fought once earlier this year. Yes. He's fought um, and got the second round victory, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so he had a pretty great showing in that. Um, but that was after a pretty long layoff. Danny Garcia hasn't fought since fighting Benavides. Not David, Jose. Let's, yeah. let's say, right. The, and the that, was, Benavides, yeah. that was after he lost to Spence, if I'm not mistaken, right? Mm -hmm. Um, he lost his fence and then he moved up to 154. Like it's been so long yeah. that we've seen Danny Garcia in the ring to think back on that Spence fight. Like even that was a layoff. And then we waited even longer to get this fight with him and Aris Landy Lara. This is for a title. Maybe going a little bit under the radar, but this is a title fight. And this is an Aris Landy Lara that's a little bit older, but a Cuban fighter that is tough and he still has it. So, Brian, how are you betting this fight? And does Danny Garcia, after such a long layoff, like, does he have a chance in this fight? Or are we going to see rusty Danny Garcia against an Aris Landy Lara that fought, I think, in March, if I'm, was it, if I'm not mistaken? It was in March. It was. <laughs> so, OK, I'll get to because I, I really like both of these dudes. Really like both of these dudes. Honestly, I wish this fight happened sooner, but we're getting it when we get it. Boxing is boxing. Earlier this year, Arislan Lara fought Michael Zarafa. And I was like, huh, Michael Zarafa. That's a very familiar name. And I was like, didn't Peter Quillen almost kill this dude before? And yes, this, this was the case. I remember um, because I was working at CBS at the time doing the ticker. And uh, I remember watching because this was like around the time Mayweather fought Andre Berto. And during a shift, I saw Zarafa get taken out like on a stretcher or whatever because Peter Quillen destroyed him. And then a few years later, I look up and Zarafa, to his credit, immense credit, turned himself into a contender who stopped Jeff Horn, who stopped Anthony Mundin, although at the time, probably not as much of an accomplishment because Anthony Mundin was just getting rocked by a lot of people at that point. Um, and he earned the the Arisani Lara fight. Now Lara um, has been low key on a tear. If you've been paying attention at all, he's done it against lesser opposition. With all due respect, including to Gary uh, Spike O'Sullivan, who follows me on Twitter, um, also got knocked out by Lara. Lara also beat Thomas Lamana, Greg Van Van Vendetti, Ramon Alvarez, Canelo Alvarez's brother. So he didn't beat Canelo Alvarez, but he made sure to take it out on his brother Ramon. And these are. This is the line of opposition we've seen since the draw with Brian Castaño, which was also in Barclays Center, which was controversial. I think a lot of people thought in the arena, at least at the time, I remember hearing a lot of people uh, saying that they thought Lara should have lost that fight. I do not. I do feel like uh, Castaño fought a great fight and he became a somebody because of that performance. So Danny Garcia, on the other hand, we haven't seen him in over two years against the Jose Benavides fight. Gave up some rounds, won a majority decision. I didn't think it was a draw, but I do think that Benavides won three, maybe four rounds. I have to rewatch that fight, which I will do before uh, this fight. And then Errol Spence was the fight before that, and that was almost four years ago. So Danny Garcia has been really inactive, and he's talked about, you know, just dealing with, like, issues and things of that nature just away from boxing, which obviously, you know, 
that's more important. And he's become more of a businessman. Like he's promoted some cars in Philly um, of, you know, fighters from here in New York City have taken part in, and obviously in Philadelphia and others. So he's he's getting into that phase of his career as well. Um, I just think Lara wins this fight by decision. And the, the, the decision is not up yet, not available. Lara, as you can see here, minus 245 on the money line, was 230 at a couple spots yesterday. But ultimately, I think Lara's going to outbox him and win to some points. In a fight where I don't think it's going to be a wipeout, I'd probably 116, 112-ish, maybe 115, 113-ish. Maybe it's a majority decision. But I think Lara's going to edge this one out. Yeah, I think when I take a look at how active both these guys have been, Lara has really, like Brian said, been on a tear. And I think it's kind of gone a little bit under the radar because he is sneaky older and people forget that. But he is such a skilled Cuban fighter. And Danny Garcia, when you go back to that Jose Benavides fight, that was his first fight at 154. And that was a fight where he didn't ever hurt Jose Benavides, like not once. Danny Garcia was the king at 140 at one time. I think that was the best weight class where Danny Garcia was just killing it. And he was that guy at 140. I don't think he was ever really, really that guy at welterweight. And then he moves up to 154 pounds. And Al the Pal, thank you for the donation. Guys, we do appreciate you when you donate to the show. And we go to your donation right away. Um, here for the $5 deal at Jack in the Box, a Jumbo Jack taco, curly fries, and a drink all for $5. Um, really? Yeah. Sure. I, don't know I, haven't been a, I haven't been a Jack in the Crack in a while. But... I'll I don't know if we have Jack in a box here. Oh, okay. Maybe it's a West don't. Coast. Maybe it's like a West Coast thing. Maybe. Um, they don't have it in Vancouver, but obviously they have it like just across the border, which I go like often. But anyways, mm -hmm. that's another point. Um, going back to Danny Garcia, obviously, Al the Paddle, we appreciate you. Um, Danny Garcia, like he hasn't been that dominant since. And we've seen him, you know, lost to Keith, Keith Thurman, lost to Sean Porter, if I'm not mistaken, and then obviously gets the loss to Errol Spence and then moves up. And I was thinking, well, you didn't really dominate welterweight, though. And then you move up to 154, but it's Danny Garcia. He's actually one of my favorite boxers of all time. So I'm very excited to see what Danny Garcia we get in the ring. I just always thought, like, length and size. Danny was a little bit small for 154. Eris Landy Lara is obviously going to be bigger than him in the ring. But Lara, I think what Danny Garcia's team is hoping is that he's aged that he still doesn't have that skill or doesn't so, so move around very weight. well. This is yes, also a this weight. is like a 156 or 57? 57 catch weight for, yeah. for Lara's WBA middleweight title. If you go on BoxRec, be careful because BoxRec and the WBA had a falling out, so they no longer recognize the WBA. But it's for a title, so. Yeah, this so, is for a middleweight title. So Yeah, and it's still in the middleweight range, but of course the catch weight. But this is such an important fight for Danny Garcia because I think business-wise, if he wins this fight, then we could probably get some more interesting fights at 154 pounds. And Danny Garcia has always been a guy that's brought in boxing fans. Like he's that dude. So for me, I think Lara is going to win by decision, but listen, I wouldn't be surprised at all. If Danny was able to get it done. The only reason I'm not rocking with Danny in this fight is because number one, I respect Laura a lot. He's been on a tear and it's that layoff. That layoff really worries me. That's too long of a layoff. Even going from Spence to Jose Benavidez, and you weren't even, even able to hurt Benavidez in that fight, and then taking an extremely long lay layoff, and I know it's business, some other stuff as well, but it's it's that layoff that worries me where I don't want to bet on Danny Garcia. But the odds for, as you heard Brian say, the decision to take Lara hasn't come out yet. Hopefully that comes out soon. Um, maybe by tomorrow because it is Wednesday. But this, to me, is still the most interesting fight because I really do feel that Danny has a chance in this fight, but it's like, what Danny Garcia are we getting? We've only seen him once at 154 pounds. So this will be definitely an interesting fight. Yeah.